I'm now found of every place to my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of the loudest praise. Teach me some. It's good to be back in the Lord's house this Sunday before, before Christmas. And we're going to be singing more Christmas songs. Amen. I'm going to ask you all to stand. Turn in your red book to page number 286. It came upon the midnight clear. 286. We'll do the first, the third, and the last. Let's all sing out to the Lord this morning. 286.
stay seated as the choir stands back up to sing 280, Silent Night, Holy Night. Help us sing that on the first and the last of 280. ask you all to stand for a fellowship song on 283, 283 Hark, the Herald Angels Sings. We'll sing the first and the last. Welcome our visitors and our choir will be going down on 283. Let's all sing out. told by my graphics art expert that this is the last time we're going to be able to put a make-believe satanic, yeah, hey buddy, a satanic symbol on the cover of our booklets. It's not a satanic symbol except for underneath back there. But I'm bringing a message that will strike the point home. What if there were no Christmas? What if there were no Christmas? So next year we will do away with that. <laughs> You know, a scenario like no Christmas, no Christ at Christmas, and no Christmas at all, man, that'd be, that'd be a mess, wouldn't it? We would be in a real mess if there were no Christ and no Christmas, to say the least. But quite frankly, I've never thought about it that way. I was raised in a Christian home. 
We had Christmas all the time. I understood what the real meaning of Christmas was. Yeah, we had Santa Claus. We had all those things. But, but I, I understood what Christmas was all about. We went to Christmas Eve services. We had special things going on in the church. And, and I've never thought about Christmas without Christ or the world without Christmas. I've never really given it a thought. So I thought maybe, just maybe, I can use reverse psychology, go through the back door and explain some things that it might be interesting if we did that. Now, I'm not talking about winter solstice. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm not talking about Festivus. Festivus is a holiday that was invented by the Steinfeld Show a long time ago. There is no such thing, but there are people who celebrate Festivus. There was a demonstration several years ago in front of the Capitol building in Olympia, Washington, the state of Washington, about Festivus, to celebrate Festivus. I'm not talking about anything like that that can be done away. I'm talking about Christmas. The Christmas with the manger, with the colors and the music and the devotions and the wise men and the shepherds and the Christ child. Without the Christ child, you don't have Christmas. We don't have Christmas The Persian Magi, the wise men, had been warned not to go back by the way that they came, but to go back home another way. And that would have been a very difficult job for them. There was only one road that went the way they went. And go back a different way would have been a real hazardous situation. But they were warned not to go back because they knew that the the Herod, King Herod, was a wicked man. And so the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 2, when they, the wise men, had departed, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. And notice, when they left, the angel came back to Joseph and said, Arise, take the child, not the baby, the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt and stay there until I bring you word to leave. Because Herod is going to search for the young child to destroy him. So Joseph did exactly what he was bid to do. He took the child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and remained there until the death of King Herod. And this was prophesied by Hosea chapter 11 verse number 1. Out of Egypt I have called my son. Now Herod didn't like that. And you know the old t-shirt, when Herod ain't happy, nobody's happy. When he found out, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, that he wanted them to come back through Jerusalem and bring me word where the child is, where the baby is, that I can come and worship him myself. I want to go worship him too. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, they, he knew. He knew the wise men were warned in a dream, don't do that. Don't go back. Don't go back. So when Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he became enraged. I think the Bible says he got angry. That, that's too weak a word. He, he was enraged. He went off on a, ta- a rage of tangent and sent word to kill all the, the boy babies, male babies, two years old and younger, who were in the vicinity, the coast, your King James says, the vicinity of Bethlehem, according to the time that he had determined from the wise men when the star appeared. And then what was spoken of by the prophet Jeremiah, this is 3115, was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah weeping for her children, and she refused to be comforted because the children were no more. No doubt Satan was at work right here. Satan was trying to kill Jesus right now, right here. He tried to kill him. He tried to kill him all the way through there. And right now at his birth, he's trying to kill the Christ child. As is a young child, probably about two years of age, he's trying to kill the Christ child. On the first days on the earth, he's trying to kill the Christ child to keep him from going to a cross, to keep him from going to give his life for our salvation. Now what if he had somehow... Now just think for me, what if he had done that? What, what if he had succeeded in doing that? Killing the Christ child, uh, eliminating him from the scene, taking him away from the plan, shall we say? You know, there was no one else. There was no one else who could do the job. The sacrifice, the blood of the sacrifice has to be pure. 
the lamb had to be inspected in the homes. The, the, the lamb was inspected for at least two or three days to be sure that the lamb was clean and pure and, and perfect to, for it to be a sacrifice. The same way with all the sacrifices. It had to be clean. It had to be pure because the blood was going to be shed and that blood was something that was necessary and God knew whether it was clean or not. And Jesus is the only one who can do that. He's the only person in the world ever been to do that. So what if Satan... What if Satan had been able to stop that? Hmm. First of all, there would have been no Christmas joy. No joy to the world. There wouldn't have been any Christmas carols. Especially Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. That's the best Christmas carol in the book. No beautiful lights. I've traveled around. I've looked at the lights on your yards and so forth. Even wrote about it in the column that I think it appeared yesterday. No beautiful lights, no candy canes, no God with us, Emmanuel, God with us. No reason for the season, no holiday spirit of giving, no good news, gospel, good news, no faith, no reason for or object of prayer. No one to pray to, no one to pray for, and no bridge to heaven. There'd be no grace, no mercy, and no forgiveness of our sins. No real purpose for our lives. No aha moment when Jesus comes into our heart, when the Holy Spirit floods our soul, when we feel that God has come into our lives and cleansed us of our sin. None of that. None of that. Nobody. Some of you are thinking right now of the day or night you got saved. Somebody tell me when you were saved. Come on, tell me. Tell me, when you got saved, when was it? Where was it? Come on. Next door. Where were you saved? Come on. Huh? Next door. 58. Where about in Georgia? All right. Where were you saved? A couple more. 812 Bridges Chapel. Honey? 72 next door. Some of you are thinking about that. You wouldn't have had that moment. You wouldn't have had that moment if Jesus had not come and your bondage to sin broken forever. You wouldn't have had that. No transformed lives. I've watched some of your lives really be transformed. Now, I didn't do a lot of stuff that some of you guys have done in your past. I, I didn't do a lot of that stuff. I, I wasn't saved in my, all my life, don't get me wrong. But I didn't do a lot of stuff that a lot of guys have said they stood up and testified to things that God saved them from. But I've, I've watched many of your lives and I've seen the changes come in. No revivals. Revival from what? Revival for what? No light at the end of the tunnel. I don't agree that that light is out there, but if it is, it's, it's a godlike thing. No church. No Christians. No bridge to the presence of God. No Holy Spirit filled life. No love of God. No wise men. No shepherds. No Simeon and Anna standing in the temple waiting on the Messiah to come. No family gatherings at church. No family gatherings at Christmas time. None of that. None of that. None of that. No Charlie Brown Christmas specials on television. And that chorus that they sing, <laughs> no beautiful Christmas trees. I've been around the, the places. I've seen the Christmas cards in lights in your homes. I've seen those things. Trees. The trees are very prominent. No, none of that. None of that. No, it's a wonderful life on TV in black and white or color. No black, none of that. No Grinch. What's he going to steal Christmas from? We don't have a Christmas because Christmas is Christ. Without Christ, we got no Christmas, so we don't even get a Grinch. We don't even get a Grinch. Amen. No Christmas vacations from school. Teachers say amen. No Christmas vacations. No New Testament. No Bible as we know it. No entrance into the holy place of God. Because it is only by the blood-stained ticket that you have that you are able to come into the presence of God. And it's the blood of Christ that causes that. With no Christ, no ticket, no entrance, no heaven. 
no revelation of Jesus Christ, no Christian organizations, no pastors, no worship music, no O Holy Night, no beautiful star of Bethlehem, no bread of life, no deliverance from sin or Satan, no real joy in this life, no testimonies to where you were saved, Christ's resurrection power, none of that, no miracles, no victory over death, and no salvation, and no hope. Now let's stop right here, just a moment, and everybody stop and think about what this means as we come to no hope and no Christian faith. Without hope, a person will give up and do something as drastic, maybe is even suicide. A city will die, a state will die, a country will die, a world will die if hope dies. If you got nothing to look forward to, you'll die. The spirit dies within a person. Being without hope is a scary thought. It's really scary. Being without hope, my, my. Without Christmas, we have no hope. We got nothing to look forward to. The Bible says, without, if God be for us, who can be against us? Romans chapter 8. Now that's a fact of life. That's a fact of life. Our hope comes from flowing like a mighty rushing stream into all the little situations that we get ourselves into. And we do get ourselves into it. The Bible talks about the temptations that come out of our own hearts, our own minds. When we scratch our heads and we say, how's this going to work out for good? I know the preacher says all things, but how's this going to work out? We scratch our head. We say, I don't understand this. Hope comes into that. We need to understand that God knows things in advance. And he's not limited to time and space. He's not limited like we are. He's orchestrating all the events of life and his plan is there. And all we've got to do is find our place and get right in there and just go along with the flow. Go along with his plan. His plan is best because it's going to work out in the end. I, 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 think, I think when we think about it, these situations, we just need to know that God is with us. He is with us. And if he is, and since he is, who can be against us and win? The answer is no one, no one can win against us. That's a truth and that's a fact. And Paul tells us that there's a lot of hope in this passage from 1 Corinthians 13. These things abide, faith, hope, and love. Now we major on love in that chapter. 1 Corinthians 13 is called the great love chapter. I got it. But hope is in there too, you know. Hope is a mighty, mighty important thing in there. So that brings me to my second point. What if there were no Christmas? Number one. But don't worry, there is one. There is a Christmas. You don't need to worry about there being no Christmas because there is one. Let's just not give it up. Let's just not let these people cancel Christmas. Let's just not let these people say Christmas doesn't matter. Christmas does matter too. I've already given you all the reasons why it does of stuff that we would not have. Now, no, no, no. It comes with us. We have the blessing that there's a Christmas and all this above us belongs to us if we make the choice to choose wisely. We have to choose Christ. We have to make that choice. We have faith, we have hope, and we have love as a result of Christmas. And because of the Christ, we have Christmas. Yeah, yeah, because of Christ's willingness to come, because of his willingness to come down and be born in the stable, the first laid on a feeding trough, stone feeding trough, laid there in the first hours, seconds of his life. And then later on, he was willing to die on a cross to have all the things that mentioned above to happen to us. The truth is because of Christmas, we really do get an endless array of gifts from God. The truth is Jesus Christ is the gift that God gave to us at Christmas time. And he truly is the gift that keeps on giving. He is, is the sacrificial life. He gave his very own life. And it just keeps multiplying. If I were to preach this message again next year, there'd be a whole bunch of other things that we could put in those first paragraphs of it, of things that we would not have. For instance, 
when Jesus came, he taught his disciples to love each other. Love each other. That's simple. Just love each other. In Luke chapter 10. And so to live that out, to live out that idea, his followers followed that scriptural idea and came up with organized charities. Those all came because of Christ. The early Christian communities stressed support for widows, orphans, the sick, the disabled. They organized efforts to help those who were dying. They built, they staffed, and they paid for hospitals. And then the founders of Christ, the followers of Christ, founded numerous charitable organizations on earth, including the Red Cross, Salvation Army, World Relief, World Vision, Samaritan's Purse, Food for the Hungry, and all kinds of other things. Now, some of them have gone off the track. I'll grant you that. Some of them have gone off the track. I do highly recommend Samaritan's Purse from that list. That is one thing that we can truly count on at this point. Uh, 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 Billy's son, I've forgotten his first name now, Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, okay. Without the birth of Christ, education would be different. Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, and Yale, and almost every one of the 123 American colleges and universities that were founded were founded by Christians. I know many of them have changed. I got it. I realize that many of them changed with time, but they would not exist at all had it not been for Christians to start them. Now, what changed about them? What changed about some of these charity things that have gone off? Without Christmas, there would not be Baptist men, chainsaws for Christ, Lutheran Thrivent Organization, Catholic St. Vincent de Paul, or other response teams that help you in the, in the time of tornado. I've been there, done that. I've been through tornadoes, three of them that came through Morgan County while I was there in a row, three of them right in a cluster, came in right on through F4, F3 and F4. And I've been there, and I've seen the devastation. And then I've got the knock on my door about 2 o'clock in the morning. Preacher, where can I park my truck? What do you mean park your truck? Well, I'm with, I'm with Samaritan's Purse. We've got a bunch of trucks out here. Do you got a place we can spend the night in the church next door? I said, well, you sure can. We're not set up for it. He said, we got it all. We got cots. We ready. We're just give us a room. Just show us where to go. And those guys worked and worked and worked. Without, just, just came and worked. They wouldn't even let me buy my hamburger. No, preacher, this is, this is on us. This is what we're doing. You don't buy. You know, you, you know, all these things. Why? Because of Christ. Because of Jesus the Christ. They came and they helped. Wouldn't have any of that. The Baptist men came in. I've got my yellow jacket. Some of you have seen the yellow jacket. Uh, uh, they come in with these feeding t- t- uh, things. You're right now in Kentucky. With those, they've got feeding troughs up there right now. That feeding the people. Without Christ... There would be no Fred Myers Dwayne Husky ministry down in Knoxville. There would be no Project Hope here. No options. No bread basket. No feed my sheep. No supplying school supplies. No amazing Graceland ministries to help people. All of these things. No local, regional, state, national, international missions and so forth and so forth and so forth. None of that. None of that would be if we didn't have Jesus Christ. Christmas is a time to reflect on the importance of eternal benefits to all of us because there would be no eternal benefits without Christ, without Jesus the Christ. And it's so much more. It's so much more. It has eternal blessings that never stop and never go away. Beyond the physical, maternal, material things. The truth is, if we pass the gift of Christmas along to somebody else, it multiplies. It multiplies. I don't know how many times I just kind of walk around here and people say, I want you to put my name on that prayer list. Now, they're not a member of this church. They've never told me they're listening to the broadcast, but I know they are. I want you to put my name on the prayer list. 
a man that walked up to me and said, here, put this on, um, wherever you want to put it, put it on the radio. He's not a member of this church. He listens to the 9 o'clock broadcast on NPC. He wants to help. He wants to be a part of it. That's what Jesus Christ does. That's what Christ does. It's so much more than we think about it, than we think. And we reap those re rewards because of the reason for the season. I like it. I love it. I do. Number three, I know if there were no Christmas, but if there is, and there is, there is a Christmas, you don't have to worry about that, but why do we miss, why do we miss it so much? Why do we miss the importance of it? Why do we so easily forget about the eternal value of the Christmas thing? I think it's because we're so hurried. I really do. I think we need to realize and we need to reflect on what we have because Jesus Christ came. He is truly the gift that keeps on giving. So why did he come to earth? Why did the Son of God become the son of a carpenter and his wife? Why in the world would God trade a throne in heaven for a manger on the earth? Why would God do that? Have you ever thought about that? He came so that when we stand before God, we can stand before God forgiven. Forgiven. Forgiven because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We don't have to be sorry for our sins. He came to pay the price for our transgressions. We have, an, we have a saying, Jesus is the reason for the season. That sounds good. But we are the reason for the season we are the reason Jesus came. We are the reason for the season. Yeah, I know it's all because of him, but he came for us. Now, I don't mind people celebrating other things. I don't. I really don't. But don't make me give up Christmas just because it offends you. Uh, listen, folks, don't, uh, don't try to cancel Christmas with me. Good grief. Get a life. What would your life be without Christ? Never been a Christmas? The world would be different. Here's the creator of time standing right there beginning of time he chose to come to the earth and be a helpless little baby be a little baby and then when he grew up he endured such scorn like you would not believe by the very people for whom he was dying and I think I know the reason why I'm going to ask him to put it up on the board it's John 3, 16. Say it with me, please. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Say it again. Say it again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It was truly and purely the love of God that brought that blessed baby to earth 2,000 years ago. I can't understand it. I can't understand why he would do that for me and for you. But I do know what Ephesians chapter 3 says. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he would grant you, me, we, us, he, she, it, all this, that he would grant you according to the riches of what? His glory. That's a lot. Man, that's a lot to be strengthened with power through the Spirit in the inner man so that, for the purpose of, so that Christ may dwell, live, stay forever, dwell in your hearts through faith and you might be rooted and grounded in love with all the saints. What is the width, the length, the depth, the height, to know by experience the love of Christ, which passes, surpasses all knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Whew. Praise the Lord. Amen. All the fullness of God. All of it. 
you think about what Jesus is, and every, you can't begin to imagine the end result. And we can be filled with all of the, the fullness of God. I'm, uh, I've gone through three generations of Christmas. Me, my kids, and my grandkids. And I know the joy that it, I get from seeing now the grandkids open a present or something. I just show up now with a casserole and <laughs> some envelopes with <laughs> green things in them. That's what I do. That's my job now. But the simple truth, I know what joy it is to watch them kids open those presents. Do you know the joy that God gets when we open the present he gave us? Can you imagine? Can you imagine how he feels when somebody looks at that present that's got the love of Christ in it, got their name on it? Let's just use a new Talinda. This is Talinda from God, Jesus Christ. And Linda looks at it and she says, I don't want that one. Can you imagine how God feels? You would feel the same way if your children did that. Oh, listen, folks. The simple truth is, you're never, never alone. You have God's Holy Spirit working within you. Not that Linda's, not, don't get me wrong now, Linda. You know I'm just using, you, sitting, you shouldn't be sitting right there by here. <laughs> okay. We, we've got to understand. Have you asked the Holy Spirit to come into your heart? Have you asked God to come into your heart? Do you live in a manner that's yielding to Him? Have you put your flesh to death? Put it on the cross. Kill it. Mortify the flesh. He says, kill it. Put it on the cross. If you've never opened God's free gift of salvation, those of you outside of our church, if you've never opened God's free gift of salvation here in the building, if you've never opened God's free gift of salvation, He invites you to open it now. There's the tree. There's the tree. Right up there's the tree. And the gift is on the tree. Open it. Without the power of the Holy Spirit of God actively working in our lives day by day, it's going to get harder and harder and harder. And you cannot begin to imagine and know how disastrous the end result is going to be if you keep on refusing to open the gift. Christmas is going to come whether you deserve it or not. But once you open God's gift... It is offered especially to you. I saw a present under the tree, under Calvary, with my name on it. God knows me by name and had a gift for me. And inside was the gift of God's holy love. And I had the good sense to open it and receive Christ as my personal Savior. And when you do, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. I've been doing this for 55 years. Going on and on. I got a Christmas present from Ira Lynn and Christie, the song leader and piano player down at Wartburg. And on the bottom of it says, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> on and on and on. It just keeps on going. And as the old preacher said, it gets dutter and dutter and dutter and going to turn to tugger one of these days when we get to heaven. Bow with me, please. Heavenly Father, bless every person here today. Lord, help us to open the gift. Help us, Lord, that we haven't done it. Open the gift. Open the present. There it is. It's open with our name on it. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you now that you'll speak to every heart here. Lord, we, we, we bring the message to a close. We bring the service in your hands. Help us, dear Lord, to open the gift. And when we have, let us give it to somebody else. Share it with somebody else. Pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. Help us to do just that. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for Christmas. What if there were no Christmas? Don't mean a thing because there is one. And we're going to enjoy it, and we're going to pass it on best we can, any way we possibly can. Now then, Lord, there may be people right now listening to me who for some reason or another have not opened the gift. Maybe they're afraid that you'll tell them to do something stupid. Maybe they're afraid that, you'll, that, you won't, that they can't live it. How many times have I heard that? I can't live it. I can't live it. I can't. No, Lord, they can't. I can't. None of us can. But with God, all things are possible. Thank you, Father. Help us to know that and realize that. As eyes are closed and heads are bowed outside of our church as well, do you know Jesus 
in the free pardon of sin. Have you trusted in him? Wouldn't you like right now to say, I, 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 that guy makes sense. That, that preacher makes sense to me. I, I, I want to do that. I, I, wanna, I really want to do I don't want to go to hell when I die. I want to go to heaven. And that preacher makes sense. I'm willing to say right now, yes to Almighty God. Can somebody out there help me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can. And we will. Heavenly Father, speak to every heart here. Use us for your glory and honor. And Lord, we'll thank you. We'll thank you over and over and over again for the little town of Bethlehem and the manger and the hill outside Jerusalem and the empty tomb and the mountain of ascension and the coming again of Jesus Christ. He just keeps on giving and we thank you for that. Bless us together and use us for your glory and honor. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. And amen. May the Lord bless you. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. I found.